Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert with The Ted Show. Happy Gratitude Day. I have so much to be oh. thankful for, including my co-host with the mostest, my co-hostess with the mostest, Kendra Davies with Stellar Life Coaching. Uh, today has been an interesting, fun, exciting day, mm. but we're not here to talk about my day. We're here to talk Ooh. it out. How are yes. you, Yes, I'm well, darling. I am well. Thank you for having me, as always. I'm so I appreciate happy it. that you were able to make the switch. Yes. We changed our date a little bit because duty calls, and I have a four always. o'clock show on Wednesdays from now on, so mm-hmm. now we're three o'clock on Tuesdays, but this Making is it work. because I picked this topic. Normally, yes. you pick the topic, so you guys know that means it's on Ted's mind if I pick the topic, and thank God Kendra was kind enough to um, humor me. <laughs> always, always, and so, I think it's like super important right now, right? Like- like there's a lot of opportunity to be all up in everybody else's business right now. Yes. So I think yes. some self-reflection, some staying right-sized and keeping the eyes in your lane on your prize is it's an important I, topic. You know how much I hate this, right? So one of the reasons why I like this topic is because I'm not a fan of stay in your own lane. Even though I mm-hmm. say that I'm a fan, I'm sorry, somebody's asking me to share it, so I want to share it. Um, the show. I I like to help. I'm a problem solver. And so mm. problem solvers like me tend to get in trouble when we uh, don't stay in our own lane. And mm-hmm. so what I want to talk about a little bit is how that thought process goes. You posted something really cool today. Michael Phelps, I'll let you uh, share it. Yeah. But I think people don't, like for me, I don't know what to do. If somebody comes to me for advice, then I want to see the advice through. That's not Mm -hmm. necessarily what they're always asking for. Or (laughs) if somebody wants me just to vent to me, I have a difficult time staying in my lane and just allowing them to vent. Um, So there's so many ways to stay in your lane and like me deviate out of your lane. Uh, But I want to talk a little bit about that. So tell us your thoughts. Let's let's dive. So the picture that I just posted is actually um, a Michael Phelps photo from 2016 in the Olympics. And um, it's one of his competitors watching him while they're competing. And it's Michael Phelps laser focused on the finish line. And the caption is that losers focus on winners, winners focus on winning, right? And so this idea of staying in your lane, when you when you brought up the topic, this was the instant message that I got for me. But to the point that you were making, it's so interesting uh, because as a coach, people will come to me and they'll say, I have this problem specifically. It's a problem with money or it's a problem with my work or a relationship. And then like we peel back a few layers and it turns out that it's actually not really that problem. (laughs) And so as you're talking about staying in your lane and when people ask you for advice and you want to see that advice all the way through and, you know, it doesn't sound like staying in the lane is actually important. It sounds like boundaries, one, is important. And it also sounds like asking if what people are actually looking for. Because I'm a doer too, right? Like I'm action oriented. This is what I do for a living. You know what I'm saying? Right. You want to change your life? Call, call me. <laughs> That's what we do. Right? It's, like, com. it's right there. Let's go. <laughs> but here's the thing. Like you said, some people just need a place to to dump. Some people are just looking for a place to vent. They're not looking to change. They're not looking, they're not in action mode, right? And that's totally okay. What I've learned is that I have to ask, hey, so based on this conversation, are you looking for feedback? Are you looking for suggestions? Or do you just wanna talk? Like, are you gonna be in a position to even receive what I'm gonna say, right? Because a lot of times, if I've gotta say something hard, like, hey, this is probably none of your business, right? Like, I think you're inserting yourself into a problem that it's not your mountain. You know what I mean? It's not It's not our mountain. So I, I can tell you, like, from my perspective, one of the things mm-hmm. I've had to learn being married is that mm-hmm. Stacy just needs a place to vent. She doesn't need me to fix it. I think we've talked about that before. Yeah. So I need to stay in my own lane. If she is coming and asking, it, it, and you're right, you have to establish what the boundaries and the parameters are. And right. I am not good at asking that ahead of time. I'm just mm-hmm. diving in and I'm going to fix it. We're going to all get dirty and then we're yep. going to have a solution at the end. That is not 
necessarily what people want. They no. just, Stacey just wants to vent. And I, am, I have had to learn over 30 years, and I'm still not good at it, to not want to go in and say, well, F everybody else, we're just going to fix this. Get out of my way. Give me a second. I'm going to take uh -huh. care of all of it. That's not what people necessarily want. No. And it's not necessarily healthy for you. You know, oh, something agreed. that I learned, I, I learned this years and years ago at a, at a workshop. They were talking about givers and takers, right? Like um, there's healthy give and take. And there's going to be unhealthy takers and unhealthy givers. And I would definitely identify myself as an unhealthy giver, right? That's like, correct. So by the way, I, I give. TV. Huh? I need a TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, one of my I am an we have established <laughs> that I am an unhealthy giver, especially in my romantic relationships. I go all in, all the way, super fast. And I'm like, let's get TVs and cars and shit. Like, let's go. So... But the thing is, is that if I'm going to give in an unhealthy way, healthy takers are going to be uncomfortable with that. And they're not going to want to get in this. Unhealthy takers are going to come in and be like, hell yeah, I want the TV. Bring it. Let's go. Right. What yeah, I want that got? watch. Yeah. yeah exactly. Right. <laughs> like, like they're going to take because I'm giving in that way. But healthy takers won't be attracted to what I'm offering. So. I think that when we talk about staying in our lane, it's not just paying attention to what they want. It's recognizing ourselves when we step out of alignment with what we want, you know? Like, I do want to be a giver that overwhelms you with love and gifts and spoils you. I do want that. I had to learn that there's a hierarchy to relationships that earn that kind of giving, right? Like. I think you and I, we, you especially in the Orlando community are a connector, right? So when people come to you with an issue, you're gonna say, oh, I know this, I know that, I know this guy, I know that person. We could probably solve this like by end of day today. What time is it now? Do you have time? Do you have a contract? Do you have a so pen? True. You know, like, like you're just like, let's go, let's go. And recognizing that if you're gonna show up like that, people are gonna show up with open hands saying, give me, right? But they're not all gonna pan out because they're unhealthy takers. That makes sense. Very, I, I have a lot of that. I have that. Uh, it's that kind of that joke where you put the light out and the bugs all come. Um, yep. I just don't kill the <laughs> bugs. They just are. And so what happens is you're right. So I immediately am like, okay, I know how to solve this. Uh -huh. well, that My solution might not be the answer. And I have to figure nope. that out, which is the stay in my lane part is them explaining to me what it is that they need, which is why asking, like you said, is so critical because then I'm not going outside of the purview of what they really came to me for. If you come yeah. to me and you wanna do a fundraiser that raises 5,000 and I've just introduced you to 35 vendors and you're gonna raise 15,000 and you're like, heck no, I got no desire to do that right, right now. Too big, I'm doing it's too big for me. My mind. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not listening to what their parameters are or I haven't asked the right questions. Yeah. And I feel like it's um, it is that faulty thought process that says, "Oh, this is how I give, right?" Yeah. So everybody wants that. Like, if you come to me and you say you want to do a fundraiser, I'm like you. I'm like, look, we're got a fucking gala. I got a gown. Do you know what I'm saying? I got a hair lady. I'm I'm all about this. I got makeup. You know what I mean? Like, I have big vision, big big vision. And I think you hit the nail right on the head that it it is about recognizing not just it's taking that large vision, but recognizing that you have to be able to break it down into those smaller pieces so it doesn't become absolutely exhausting. Yes. And this, so another thought that I had is I actually had a consultation with a potential client the other day and uh, he was calling me about work, right? And he said, so I've got four years of like a meets expectations reviews at work. And he said, I have gone back and tried to challenge uh, the feedback from last year because I asked for feedback all year long. They told me I was doing good. And then at the end of the year, I got meets expectations and I didn't get a raise. But when he went back to challenge it, his HR people was like, listen, you have four years of this, different projects, different managers, same results. The problem is not them. The problem is not the feedback. The problem is you. Woo. Woo. 
Ooh, so now he's nervous. He feels like he's going to lose his job. Something's got to give. He's like, how do I do this? I really want to challenge the feedback. And like my job in that moment is to be like, shake him awake and say, listen, you, there's no point. He wanted, he asked me if he should challenge the feedback from two years ago. Oh, I was like, no, you should take that feedback. Right. Sometimes staying in our lane is recognizing when the world is pushing us back or somebody is telling us no, or we're being confronted over and over again with the same roadblock, the same challenge, it's stopping and saying, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe uh, them not I following just, up. This Go is ahead. what I just discovered, Kendra. This is, you're so that dead you on. you so, might be wrong. Imagine, yeah. hopefully this isn't recorded. Yes, so the thing is, is that I, I don't wanna, I don't necessarily listen to that feedback the way that I should. So if mm -hmm. I am the one that's stressed out or getting the negative feedback or not getting the feedback I want, and like mm -hmm. you said, it's all of these other outside people who have nothing to do with each other, and all of it points back to me, I'm the common denominator in this thing. Uh, I don't know who that they could be talking about. It can't be me, but I know <laughs> it's me. And so what mm -hmm. I, one of the reasons why stay stay in your own lane has come up, especially lately, is because projects that I'm working on, I'm getting redirected or hand slapped or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I keep getting the same message. And I'm finally like, well, you're doing it dumb. <laughs> it's approach. you. It's, it's you. you. And For so sure, it's not me. Perhaps my way isn't the right way for them. Why? I would like I to know. say out loud for the record that I don't believe that that's actually true, but I'm going to hold space for you that it might be a possibility. I mean, you never, right? So here's the deal. You have, to, so I have to figure out, okay, mm. if I step out of my lane, what are the repercussions? What are the consequences? What am I going to feel? How are they going to feel? Mm. It's more than just giving your advice or your expertise, quote unquote. Yeah. I also have to remind myself, not everybody that asks for my advice really wants it. Mm -mm. They don't. They just no. want to vent or they want to hear what they want to hear or they yeah. have an expected outcome of what I'm going to say. Correct. So I can't, I can't in good mm -hmm. conscience blame them because I haven't set the parameters or the boundaries or I'm not yeah. paying attention to them. You know, I think one of the hardest spiritual awakenings, right, uh, for me was the revelation that the problem might be me. <laughs> like it is, it is a truly, <laughs> truly spiritual experience. Like, cause it's humbling. It, it takes you out at the knees. And I resisted, man. I resisted. I fought to the bitter end. I thought that I'm right. I thought that I know. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought. And you know what it really came down to? is that all of my thoughts were based on bullshit beliefs. Yeah. But I had just bought into them and thought, you know, hey, I am I am this. And so that means that I'm meant to do this in the world. And it was just a thought that I had a belief and the world was being like, nah, I don't think so. I don't really think <laughs> that's done. the one. And I was like, no, 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 we can make this fit, I promise. But then the universe literally removed every single thing piece by piece. Like at one point I'm living in my fucking car, resisting, white knuckling my way through. And I remember the moment where I broke and I was like, this isn't working. Like I do not have the love I want. I do not have the relationships I want. I do not have the career I want. I do not feel satisfied. I do not feel content. I do not feel joy. I feel overwhelmed. I feel sad. I feel exhausted. I feel tired of forcing everything all the time. And to me, staying in my lane is saying, I don't fight anymore. You're right. Yes, two plus 10 is five. Yes, 100%. Because 100%. as an intelligent human being, you know it's not true, but you're right. For your own mental health, yeah. your own well-being, your own direction, everything mm -hmm. about you, you have to learn to accept that. It, I'm yeah. preaching that. I'm not saying I do it really well. Oh, no. I hear you. you. You have to do it. Well, I can yeah. tell you to do it all day long. I just don't want to hear it about me.
of course. But you know, it's like what's for you is meant for you. Those projects that you're going to shine on are going to come to you. It's when we start white knuckling and like twisting and shaving off the edges, like you're breaking a sweat, sanding shit down, trying to make it fit, you know, like you're putting in more work. I remember, I remember putting in more work than the people I was supporting, right? Yes. Like, like, wait a minute, why, why am I cold calling? what? Like, this isn't even my project. Like, why am I doing this? If why I am I? More, because you wanted it more for them than they wanted it for themselves. Amen, this is brother. where I have the biggest issue is because I want it more for certain people and I am getting out of my lane to help them because I think that's what mm -hmm. I should do or that's what they need. They mm -hmm. don't. They, they don't. don't. If they don't want it, then I shouldn't have to want it for them. Mm -hmm. and, so and I can tell you, question. I feel like that thing that says they need me or they need it is like my ego because I get that voice too. Yeah. And it's just my ego. I just don't want to be wrong, you know, like especially if I if I really buy into somebody's cause, you know, or like somebody's vision, you know, like I, I, I work with people all the time who say, you know, I want to write a book. I want to do a thing. And then they tell me their ideas and I'm like, holy shit, this is going to be amazing. Like, you're going to be a bestseller. Like, you might be on Oprah before me. It's like TED show today, <laughs> Oprah tomorrow. It's happening, right? It happens. Like, like, that is the experience. But then it's like, they're not there. And if I'm not mindful, right? If I'm not mindful of where they're at in the journey, I get too far ahead. They disconnect and they'll quit. Like yeah. part of learning how to support people is learning how to support them where they're at. Like, can yeah. I see you exactly where you're at? Not where I think you should be, uh, you know, all of that nonsense. Like, I wanna see you That's where hard. you're at. What resources do you actually have? What is gonna be maintainable and sustainable for you? You know, like if somebody comes in and they wanna lose weight, I'm not gonna go into your nutrition right away. I'm gonna talk about your fucking ideas about food. Like, what do you think about food? Like, are you pumped about broccoli? Like, if you're not, like, we have to have a different conversation, right? right. So it's like, I know how to meet people where they're at. And I think that in my personal life, I'm with you. In my personal life with my friends, I'm like, here's it all, everything, let's go. Hey, you you know what you I mean? Like, exactly, exactly. But, you know, I think staying right sized, keeping my ego in check um, and making sure that I'm not doing it to fulfill something in me that gets some sort of validation that I'm more awesome because I did it. You know what I mean? Like when I, I remember. I also think people, uh, one of the things I was thinking as you were speaking is that there have been times where I'm asked for my opinion, the parameters are there. I am giving them my advice, my expertise. That's mm -hmm. a one shot deal, people, which I'm having to learn. The next mm -hmm. time they may ask, and if I don't mm -hmm. ask about the parameters again, it could be a totally different set of rules. And so mm -hmm. I can't assume that because you wanted my input and my opinion on this issue, that the next one you want the exact same. And that's where mm -hmm. I tend to go, what the F, you asked me about this. This was so successful the last time you implemented mm -hmm. what we talked about, and now you don't want my opinion? Well, that's again back to me because I didn't set the boundaries for each particular thing. It's not necessarily about yeah. a relationship. It's about what they're trying to talk about at that moment or whatever the project. Yeah. Is. And, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, I think that if we're going to talk about staying in our lane, I think it's about recognizing the self. Like if I'm self-aware enough to know that, you know, I'm putting in more effort than the people that I'm working with. And that could be my personal relationships, romantic relationships, my work, like it doesn't matter if I'm putting in more work and I'm feeling um, unappreciated or I'm moving into this, this dynamic where it starts to feel unhealthy and I'm getting resentful. I am responsible for that. Like to me, that feeling is a boundary violation of mine. Like I have boundaries and parameters for what I'm comfortable with. And if I am uncomfortable, that is often on me. And so even when you brought up the topic, it was always about the self. Like this is my lane. You think about it like bumpers at the bowling alley, right? Like 
<laughs> How do I make it so I get no gutter balls, right? right? No gutter balls means that I have to have those boundaries. I have to have those parameters. I have to have clarity about who I am and how I operate. Um, and then I also think that there's an element of this, like uh, the, the thing that's coming into my head is like not comparing other people's outsides to my insides, right? Like yes. there's there's an element of a measuring stick of success that uh, everybody uses in some capacity and it's usually about comparison. You know, you talk a lot about social media and like what you see and how it looks this way, but you really have no idea what it actually is. Yeah, like and, Facebook. Yeah. And, but like when we're comparing ourselves to, to these other folks that we think have it all, I mean, um, I forget who said it, but they said comparison is an act of violence against the self. Wow. Right? Like, like you cannot, yeah, you can't compare your insights to other people's outsides. Like that will never add up. You will never add up to that because you're getting a curated version of somebody when you look at their outsides, you're not Correct. getting the messy insides. So I think that part of staying in your lane is checking your ego, sticking with compassion, sticking to your own boundaries, right? And then making sure that you're not comparing or measuring yourself up against unrealistic and um, impossible outcomes. And you have to set the boundaries, you have to learn. So one of the things that I think people find difficult is figuring out where that boundary is. And remember, the boundary is yours to set. Mm -hmm. Does that and mean hold. that you might have and hold? You might have different boundaries depending on your relationship. I assume I probably do, but there are still core boundaries that I have that I don't mm -hmm. change for anyone, or at mm -hmm. least I hope I don't. I'm sure I right. do, though. I'm guilty of this. I'm guilty mm -hmm. of doing all the things we that we're talking are. about now, which is why it's so important to talk about it. But I feel like people get so upset when they're, when they're, I, I feel like it also goes back to voice. So if you've had a voice and you feel like your voice is good, you have to remember that what's good for you is not good for the other, necessarily good for the other person. So the way that I react, the way that I would do it, the way that I would goal set or plan or implement something is completely different than the next person. And even if they're asking for my advice, they still have to take what I give them, digest it and do it in their own way. And I can't expect them to be the exact way yeah. my lane. Um, I can't expect them to be that way. And it's not easy, folks. If you're a mm. giver or a planner or somebody who gets asked for advice yeah. all the time, it is very difficult not to want to just jump in and fix it. Yeah. I don't want to talk about but it. One, thing, it fixed. one little thing that you said that is standing Oops. out to me, and that is like this focus on outcomes, right? Like, I think over the last five months, I've talked a lot about focusing on the journey. Like we don't know what the future is going to actually look like right now. So you right. cannot focus on the outcomes. You don't know what is coming. So it's like giving up the idea that you can plan on this outcome and learning to enjoy the journey and build step by step, I think is, is another one of those spiritual awakening type experiences that you actually get from point A to point B better, faster, more efficient with less burned bridges and less emotional panic attacks and breakdowns <laughs> when, when we're not so attached to a final outcome, like what it has to be like, what it has to look like, what it should, you know, get stop shooting on each other, you know, like really letting go of the outcome orientation and make it about the journey. Like, how do I want to feel? What do I want to do? What do I want this to look like? Do I want to enjoy this process? What are the boundaries that I need to have in order to know that that's possible and then that it's going to happen? I love that. I think you're right. I think the outcome, especially nowadays, nobody knows what the outcome is of anything right now. I feel like mm -hmm. we all feel uh, like we have no control over things and we're trying to control, which is also part of the stay in your lane. You know, I want to control the entire narrative. Kendra, that's it. I'm going to control it. This mm -hmm. crazy world of COVID is yeah. not going to get me. And I feel like that we put so much pressure on ourselves uh, to to make sure the outcome's good, that we don't enjoy the journey. We're also taught things like no pain, no gain. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not necessarily a big proponent of that. I feel like that no. takes away from the journey and that every journey has to be painful in order for you yeah. to have a successful or that journey. You have to hustle, hustle hard, yes. hustle yeah. hard. I'm like, bump all that. What's your hustle? What's your hustle? To, I want to I want to work less days and make more money. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Shit. I ain't trying to work harder. I want to work smarter. Thank you. I want yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I, I I love your thought. I think it does all come back to you and the ego and the barriers and the boundaries that you set. Now, when yeah. I say that again, I, I I'm not doing it properly myself. Otherwise, I wouldn't have wanted to talk about this topic so bad. <laughs> <laughs> This is like my weekly therapy session. So thank you very much. It's just, it's, it's my very hard. Pleasure. I, I appreciate it. It's, it's, I think it's on other people's minds though. I mean, you see that yeah. a lot. I think people don't right now, especially in the unknown, people really are just trying to dip their toe into different things and they're getting burned and um, there's patterns. And I think people just need to figure out kind of where you're at, but you have to establish it. Like you said so clearly, you've got to be the person who sets the boundary in the parameter. Yeah. And, once and you, you know, that- I think that it's really important to, I, I want to, I just want to reiterate, I know we're coming close on time, but like that idea that if I have it in my head that I'm helping them, right? Like I'm helping them, but I'm working harder than they are. I'm not actually helping them. Correct. I'm not actually meeting that goal or that outcome that I'm striving for. And I feel like at the end of the day, that is a more accurate measure, right? Like when um, I did this talk for a women's group on goal setting, right? And I said, I want you to prioritize joy, like rate it on a scale from one to four, all of your goals. And you only take threes and fours. That's it. If it's a one or a two, we're going to get through your, your threes and fours. And then we'll come back to the ones and twos. And let me tell you the amount of resistance that is met, right? When I'm just like, choose things that bring you joy. If it doesn't bring you joy, don't do it. You can come back to those things later. I'm just saying, focus on the things that are gonna bring you joy now, right? Just consider it. Because what happens is we get so focused on that outcome that we lose sight of the journey. We lose sight of the joy that we can have in building the life that we want instead of just being so focused on that end outcome of having the life that we want. And on that note, how do we reach you and your brilliance? Uh, What's the best way? Stellar Life Coaching, obviously social media. How do you want them to reach out? Yes, you can message me on Facebook. You can contact me via my website at stellarlifecoaching.com. My phone number is also on the website. You can text or call that phone number if you have any questions or you want to connect. I offer a free 30 minute consultation. I do uh, lunch and learns for businesses and small groups. I do workshops and retreats. So if you have any uh, needs on how to grow and develop you, your relationships and your teams, uh, I'm here to support you. Fantastic. All right. That was a joy. I see. I learned a lot. I learned learned it's all about you, not about me. (laughs) <laughs> I'm so glad you were taking notes. I mean, I find, mm-hmm. I've, I've progressed. I've definitely made <laughs> myself progress. Uh, thank you for all of your insights. Thank you so much, Kendra. We'll be back next week. I don't know what the topic will be, but I'm sure it will be Roll just the dice. Lively. You never know. <laughs> all right. Love and appreciate you. We love and appreciate thank all you. of you. We'll see you back soon. Mwah. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, guys.